Good morning or good day wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the beautiful Welsh countryside. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you what I eat in a day when I'm having one of my chill days. I'm not crazy drinking this cleaver water. If you watch my homestead video, I talk about all the amazing health benefits that cleavers have to offer us. And it's the most refreshing drink first thing in the morning. It actually tastes like cucumber water. It's quite strange, but it's very delicious and so refreshing first thing. Mm. Now that my body is suitably hydrated, it's time to get to the gym and put that work in. I'm gonna lift some heavy weights, get that blood flowing around my body, wake myself up, go for a little run as well to build up an appetite for a delicious hearty breakfast. You can't get more hearty than this for breakfast. Inspired by my trip to Jamaica recently, this is peanut porridge. Very simple to put together and I make enough for meal prep too. First up, get some unroasted, unsalted peanuts into your blender along with some organic oats. Add some non-dairy milk, I'm using some coconut milk. Get it blitzed up until it's lovely and smooth, then transfer it to a saucepan over a low heat. Stir in some ground cinnamon, and some vanilla bean paste or whatever vanilla you can get hold of. Plus I'm adding some coconut sugar for sweetness. Keep stirring the mixture until it thickens up and goes creamy and luxurious. Then serve up and top it with some toppings of your choice. I'm topping mine with some banana, some blueberries, some peanut butter, a little maple syrup and some hemp seeds. Guys, I got some more rhubarb from my neighbor's garden. If you saw my homestead video that we post recently where I did a whole tour and gave you an update on my plans for this year in the garden and living in the countryside, you would have seen my lovely neighbor's garden and all their amazing rhubarb that she lets me help myself to whenever I want. And there's one big task that I have to do today and that is making my kombucha. Now, I wasn't gonna get this into the What I Eat In A Day video, but it's such a ritualistic, amazing experience making the kombucha for me. And so many people get so excited when I give them a bottle of my homemade kombucha. I thought I'd share it with you because it is so fun and it's nice to do. Here she is, my kombucha. It's really nice to be doing this outside in the garden where most of the ingredients that we're flavoring this with have come from. Today, I'm gonna be infusing some of this lovely rhubarb into my kombucha that I've already fermented. So it's fermented once, and the second fermentation is when you infuse a flavoring into it and we bottle it up. Yeah, these herbs are gonna go so well with that rhubarb. Mmm. If you've not heard of kombucha before, it's a beautiful fermented tea drink that originated in China years ago. It's got some amazing health benefits, including being really good for your gut bacteria. I'll show you how to make kombucha in a video that's coming soon, but today I'll just show you how to bottle it up. I've sterilized some bottles in some boiling water, and then I'll fill them with some of my lovely flavorings, including my neighbor's rhubarb, some homegrown herbs such as lemon balm and thyme, plus a little bit of maple syrup. And that sugar from the maple syrup is actually gonna help ferment this drink even more, creating a really amazing fizz. Now the exciting bit. Whoa, you've got to stop it just before the top to allow some room for the gas because you can see already it's fizzy. Look at that, that's unbelievable. Even though there's loads of room for the, the gas to escape, but we're gonna seal this now and it's gonna force all of that gas into the drink to make it really bubbly when you open it. I got this fancy bottling machine just online. It's not that fancy, but basically pop it on and then press down and it seals it. I'll let this second ferment now for three days maybe. Pop it in the fridge then and it will slow it down so it doesn't explode. 
because it has exploded on me in the past. So there we go, we got nine bottles of my homemade Welsh rhubarb, lemon balm and thyme kombucha. I reckon this one is going to be probably my best one yet. Time will tell. So for lunch I wanted to make use of something that's growing abundantly everywhere at the moment and that's stingy nettles. People don't really realise how nutritious they are and I actually made a video that covered nettles completely and we made some delicious recipes using them. So I'm going to get some more now and show you another amazing recipe with nettles that you have to make. The perfect lunch. It's so windy. What is going on? Come on nettles, where are you? Found some nettles. I'm working for my food, which means it tastes better. And these are some lovely nettles. Oh, shh. It's harder getting down. Ugh. First up, let's give these lovely nettles a wash. Just soaking them in some water. So I'm going to saute this lovely leek and garlic down now and meanwhile chop up my nettles. I will have to add the safety message of don't just pick them up with your bare hands because you will get stung. I have got stung already but it's all good. I'm going to use my tongs and we're going to chop them roughly and then get them to the pan. So any kind of processing of the nettles will get rid of that sting. So with me sauteing them off now, I don't have to worry that when I eat them, they're going to sting me. So whether you're boiling them, steeping them, stir frying them, drying them, the sting will be removed, I promise. So nettles have been used by cultures all around the world for a long, long time for their amazing health benefits, but also some magical purposes. Some people say that they ward off evil spirits, so they must be good. Meanwhile, I'm going to whisk together my chickpea flour batter. To some chickpea flour, I'm going to add some turmeric, some cumin and some coriander, all ground, plus a little bit of sweet smoked paprika. Mix it up, then whisk in some non-dairy milk and some water, plus a pinch of salt. All right, so get this batter in, let it set for a minute and then give it a stir to break it all up. So you just want to work the mixture, just breaking up any large chunks, letting that chickpea flour cook out. I'm going to season up now with some lemon juice and some lemon zest too. And I'm going to serve up the scramble with some lovely roasted wedges some sauerkraut salad and some tahini dressing. Try and get as many seeds as I can into my food. So top in with some pumpkin seeds as well and a bit of smoked paprika to finish. Bosh, I actually never made this before, so I'm intrigued to see what it tastes like. But look at that, beautiful. It looks lovely in the sunlight too. <laughs> I'm joking. Mmm, wow. So if you don't eat eggs and you want a scrambled egg-like dish, that doesn't have any soy in it, then this is perfect for you. And then if you want to add some amazing nutrition, add in nettles to the scramble, game changer. It's really, really good actually. Mm.
just about to make dinner, but we just got distracted by the little lambs. They just run back and forth all evening, like they're having the time of their lives. It's so cute to watch. This is Wales for you. There's more sheep in Wales than people. <laughs> it's crazy. So for dinner, um, this is something that I'm going to make and eat over the next couple of days because I don't always just cook each meal from scratch. I ain't got time for that. Who does? But anyway, we're going to make some kimchi fried rice. I love kimchi so much and usually I just eat it obviously fresh, but this one I'm actually going to be cooking it. So it kind of kills all the good stuff in it, but that flavor that it adds to the fried rice is just incredible. So what I'm going to do first though, is actually prepare some tofu. And this is how I get my tofu really crisp and succulent in the center. I'm gonna crumble it into some nice chunks and sprinkle over some corn flour, some chili flakes, and also I've got some wild garlic powder. If you watched the recent wild garlic video where I explored all the incredible mythical facts about wild garlic, you would have seen me harvesting it. And this is that same wild garlic that I harvest and dry to a powder. If you don't have this, just use some garlic granules. I've had a few people that have told me that I haven't cooked for, that they just can't get on with tofu, they don't like it, they don't like the texture, they say it's bland, but cooking it using this technique will persuade them. I'm, I'm that confident. So the corn flour, coating it in that and also the flavorings help create that crispness. And as soon as that hits the oil in a non-stick pan or a wok like I'm using today, it will just instantly crisp and go really golden and caramelize it. It's a really great way of cooking tofu. But I'll let it cook for like five minutes in the pan and meanwhile, I'm gonna make this amazing kimchi sauce that's gonna run through this fried rice. So into a mini blender, I'm gonna add some kimchi, some tomato paste with that real umami flavor that tomato has, a small onion, garlic, ginger and chili, plus some soy sauce and some nori. It's so important if you're eating a plant-based diet to get seaweed into your diet and nori is sold everywhere so it's very convenient to get that and add it to any of your meals. Let's check on this sauce. Oh yeah, that has got that powerful flavour, wow. Mm. Add some heat to this too. Let's check on this tofu. Oh, it's already getting crispy. Look at that there. Look at that. Beautiful. So before I get that amazing kimchi sauce into this, I'm going to finally chop up some vegetables. Make sure you cut them all the same size so they take the same amount of time to cook. Stir fry that for a while. Get my kimchi sauce in and then we'll stir through our cooked rice. Little nuggets they are. Beautiful. All right, this is where it gets exciting. Add in the sauce. We're gonna give this a really good stir fry, then stir through the rice. All of that sauce has gotta go in. Woo, yeah boy. This is gonna be delicious. And this is just pre-cooked rice that I cooked yesterday. Just crumble it in. Each piece of rice coated in that amazing sauce. Get all those bits that are on the bottom of the pan. That's where the flavor is. Once the rice is stir fried, prepare some garnishes. All I'm topping mine with is some chopped spring onion, some more of the gochugaru chili flakes, sesame seeds, and I've got some lime as well. Voila. Cameraman Tom is getting a portion, of course, so that's why I'm doing this one up. Are you hungry, cameraman Tom? <laughs> and the rest of it will be my meal prep. Bit of lime over the top. And now let's eat. I feel like a nice sit down on the sofa tonight and eat my food. Yum. Oh, look at that steam, piping hot. Bit of everything on my fork. Mm. I had a nice chunk of tofu and it still remained like very, very meaty just because of the way we cooked it. Absolutely delicious. 
Mm. Now, I definitely think I've revealed that I really love fermented foods in today's video. We've had sauerkraut, we've had homemade kombucha and kimchi. I think I could definitely do a nice fermentation video specifically to fermentation. If you're up for that, then comment below. I need to know if you're even intrigued at all before I do it because it's quite a complex one. It's easy, but quite complex. So comment below. So it's been a few weeks. This is a taste test of the rhubarb, thyme and lemon balm kombucha that I made. That is beautiful. Subtle flavor of the rhubarb, which is so nice. It's not as fizzy as I'd like, but I just need to leave it out of the fridge a little bit longer. Perfect. So there you go, guys. There's a few meals for you that I hope will get you inspired. Thanks for joining me on just a random chill day that I had. Um, actually, it turned out to be a little work because we had to film all the videos, but there we go. It was fun and we had some tasty food. I usually end the day with a lovely herbal tea and a few dates. Just a little relax now before I head to bed and get my full eight, nine hours, ideally. And I actually made a herbal tea recipe in uh, this video. I forgot what I called it, but this video, you can see me make a really calming homemade tea that with ingredients that you probably have already at home. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, comment as well, and also um, click join plus check out the website for signed copies of my cookbooks. See you soon, guys. Thank you for watching. Good night now. I'm going to bed. <laughs>